hello guys happy wednesday i'm happy to be here today and we are going to talk about um how to find a job when you're 50 years and older okay how senior citizens or seniors can be able to reinvent their career and find a good job and as we get started i want to welcome you to the gina Guy show as usual this is the place where you come to get your inspiration dose so you can win in your career in your business and in your academic aspirations so today um uh oh my one just going off so today we're going to talk about the seniors and how they can get a job um, because I've been receiving a lot of requests or um, I have worked with quite a number of seniors who are struggling to get a job and with that I figured it's only fair. I hope you guys can hear me. It's only fair that if I come here today and share with everyone tips on what you can do to enhance this process and help you get to a point where finding a job when you're over 50 is not going to be that much of a struggle. And as we get started, we want to just um, face the reality. First of all, I want us to accept that getting or looking for a job when you're over 50 is not as easy as when you are younger than that okay so when you're over 50 it's real the struggle is real it's not the same as other people so we want to face that reality and that way we can come up with a way of making things work or working around it so that you can achieve your goal ageism is real ageism is real and what i want you to also understand is that um when you find these struggles in looking for the job what you're fighting is not your age the problem is not your age the problem is not that you're 50 the problem is that um, there is a bias that you are having to fight and overcome. It is the bias that exists in the market. It is the bias that exists um, amongst the people who will be reading your resume. That is the recruiters and the hiring managers and all of um, anyone who will be involved. So that is the problem that we encounter. The problem is not that you are 50. The problem is the bias that has existed in the market. It has taken a grip of it to a point where it's actually very real. And so in this at this point, what I want you to know, what I want you to do is to understand that when you're fighting to overcome this struggle, what your focus should be is just to get into overcoming the bias of the people who are going to be hiring you. It's not you trying to fight your age or trying to be different and all of that. The problem is them who will be working or who will be assisting you in that. Okay. And so what do you need to do or what are some of these biases? I'm going to um, share with you a few of them. Uh, some of these biases is when you are old. Um, so they think that your skill sets are outdated or um, you, uh, you have a way of doing things and therefore you don't like to learn new things because you have been in that, um, you have been doing things in the same way for quite some time and therefore trying to teach you new things is gonna be hard. So um, that bias makes them feel like you're not gonna be a good fit. You're not gonna be able to adjust quickly and easily into the new ways of, of doing things. They also assume that you have low energy, you know, when you're working and someone has to do something real quick, they assume that because you, you are older, then you have low energy and they would have to deal with that. So on top of you not being upbeat and um, be able to learn a lot quite quite quickly, they will also feel like you have low energy levels, which is a problem. And so when they feel that and they also will feel like... Um, your way of doing these things are obsolete, they are outdated. It's gonna cost a lot for them to like bring you up to speed and more so they feel that you are going to be resistant. Where when they are trying to train you or tell you what to do, show you what to do, they will feel like, they always feel like, oh, okay, she is not gonna be adjusting to that because she is just used to doing things the old way. You know, like trying to teach an old dog new tricks type of approach, but that is actually not real. So when you understand that those are the biases that you are fighting, so how are you supposed or how can you overcome that, that way they will give you an equal chance and give you this job. Now that is what I am going to tell you. So number one, it is from how you will present yourself. Now remember, when you do your job application, it goes through an ATS system. 
Okay, and what an ATS system does is that it goes through, it filters the resumes and only lets the right ones or people who f seem qualified, the resumes now get into a human who is going to be making that decision. Now remember your resume can still go through that and then when it gets to the hiring manager or whoever is going to be recruiting, they could still feel like you are very old. So number one, what you need to do, one, you want to put your resume or um, have your resume not presenting your age. You want to make your, your resume to look ageless. And what do I mean by that? By this, what I mean is do not give hints about your age. For instance, if you have, if you're 50, chances are you have worked about 25 to 30 years. So if you have um, a 30 year work experience, you do not necessarily to have all of that on your resume. Because if you have worked for 30 years and you did not work when you were a minor and all of that, it will give a clear hint that you are way older and it's going to be harder for them to try and adjust because things that happened 30 years ago, chances are they don't even happen in the workforce today. Everything has changed very fast and very quick and they don't want to feel that. Okay? I want to I want to know if, we got, if you guys, we are together because it's important. Hit me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Okay, so number one on your resume, don't give hints about your age. Cut out the, the stuff that you don't need to have it there. Remove it and um, just let it be like presenting you for what is going to be applicable to do. <clears throat> one thing I want you guys to know is that when you're doing your, when you're writing or when you're preparing your resume, you do not necessarily have to have over 15 years of experience. In fact, 10 years are good enough. So for any positions that you had, let's say, uh, from um, 2010, from 2010 up to 2020, that is 20 years. So 20 years of experience, 10 years of experience is enough. 10 years of experience is enough. So if you have older experiences, you can cut them out of the resume. But then it will depend with what you are trying to achieve, the position you're applying to. So all of that is going to be impactful. So with a career coach, with someone who can advise you on that, it will be very helpful to know what to remove, what not to include, and why. Okay, And so when you submit your resume, when you prepare your resume, you want to use information. You want to provide information that is updated. You want to use the, your verbiage has to be something that is applicable in today's market. For instance, I get people who come to me and they're like, oh, hey, Gina, please help me prepare my resume, blah, blah, blah. And some of the skills that they tell me is that I can type over 50 words in a minute. I mean, in a minute. And, um, oh, I see Moses saying that you can hear me loud and clear. Thank you, Moses. Okay. So sometimes when you give skill set like that, anyone who tells me, hey, I can type 50 words or 45 words in a minute in a computer, that automatically makes me think this person is a, a typewriter type of old right because if you care about the words you are typing today it means you used a typewriter at some point and therefore this feels like a skill set to you or when you were working back in the day you are still stuck in that era you do not understand that right now anyone who is coming to the workforce have got to know how to type and type many words in a minute right and so how you present your resume how you present your skill set on the resume is going to give hints that is why i advocate look for a career coach or someone who can help you at least understand the trends of the market who can prepare your resume in a modern way and in a way that is going to now give hints about your age because if they pick that they will not be calling you in they will opt to go with the next person okay and then another thing that you want to focus on is when it comes to interviewing with a resume, you can pass and you can get all your way into an interview. But then when you get into the interview, you have to present yourself in a way that is going to make them feel that you are actually current, you're up to date, you are upbeat, you're able to learn, you're able to pick up the speed and actually help the organization achieve the goal. Okay, because sometimes you can have all that resume, but then when you go into the interview, you're talking about things that are not applicable today. For instance, when you go into the interview, you really want to talk about your ability to learn. You want to make them feel and understand that I am a quick learner. I can be able to learn new things, pick up new technology, and actually run with it. 
they don't want to feel they don't want to hear things that you did 30 20 years ago which might not be applicable but then if they built into the experience and what you're doing today that is good but then it comes down to how you say it you can say the same thing and it will, it will make them feel like they are living 16 years ago and you never had facebook or social media or internet but then when you put it in a manner that is turning your age into experience as a valuable asset versus something that is actually working against you now remember as i started i told you guys that when it comes to age you're fighting the bias it's not your age your age is not a problem not at all but then what you're fighting is that bias in the market about your inability to learn new things and your old ways of doing the same things and your your low energies right and so when you go for the interview another thing you must do is to have that high energy just be upbeat if you are low energy very quiet laid back type of a person that way you might want to like you know do something that will make you feel cheered up and happy that way you will go and present yourself in a cheerful manner where they will pick good energy good vibes coming from you and it will make them feel like oh this is a person who we can you know run day-to-day -day activities with very confidently and without a doubt that they will be able to um to help us achieve our goal you know right so when you combine good uh having a good resume which is presenting you as a modern worker with good in updated latest technology latest information and then when you go to your interviewing and you are using modern technology information for instance um for instance, if you're in IT and or you're in technology field, you might have to update your skill set. If it requires for you to go ahead and take a certification, you might have to do that. But if you're in a field that does not require so much technology, you kind of have to be updated with the ongoing on technology. And one of the things, the easiest way that you can do that is to have um, a professional LinkedIn profile. You need to have a LinkedIn profile. If you are 50 years and older, you need a job, you kind of have to have a good updated professional LinkedIn profile. Because what that shows is that you are actually caught up with the trends of the market today. Even if you're not in technology field, whatever it is that you do, it is important for them to see that you are actually present online. You need to have your profile going because that is the right, the easiest way for them to know, oh, this person understand what is going on today. Not only on the LinkedIn, you can also have your Facebook page, I mean Facebook account, uh, which is formal with your names. That way they can be able to pick to see you in case they look you up. Sometimes they will look you up without even letting you know. They will just go in there and look at you, uh, look at your profile. And now the problem is if you have... Uh, if you have poli politically incorrect information or biases or things that you should not have on your profile, especially Facebook. So it doesn't matter how much you hit Trump or how much you love Obama or how much you hit both. Um, when it comes now to recruitment, it's always good to not be involved in things like that or things like racism, things that are demeaning to women, um, crazy stuff that you really don't want your employer to know. At some point, you just take them down. Just don't post them if you feel that they will be looking you up. Now, good thing about 50 years and older, they are usually um, woke and um, very well matured, uh, very well put together. Most of the time, they are morally upright. And therefore, it's, it's not easy for you to find that they posted some profane stuff on the social media. But then you just never know. So I just thought of mentioning it because I don't want to just assume that everyone will know. To take stuff like that down so if you don't have a, 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 a linkedin profile you actually will need to have a linkedin profile doesn't matter doesn't matter your age doesn't matter your experience you just need it because they want to see that you actually do have an understanding of what is going on in the market today and technology is a big 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 one right now technology you just have to be aware of using technology even if you're not savvy what you need to do at least is to be aware of it and the easiest way to to be uh to present that to them is to just be it that is having that profile not telling them i know linkedin but actually having that profile in itself and then another thing another point i want to insist on um is networking now this this is a problem a little bit for the people that i work with this has been a struggle a little bit especially for african immigrants and um 
I don't know. I don't know if because uh, those who are 50 years and older did not um, have not been here since childhood or something like that. But um, not many of us are. But then you find that when they were growing up, I think in our culture in Africa, we were taught to not like blow your own trumpet. You do not go talking about your yourself and your achievements and how good or how how bad you you, you are in you know bad in a in a positive manner. <laughs> Sorry about that. So um, how good you are in certain things or in your whatever. But I find people who are actually not even 50, even 45 years old, who I have to coach them how to own up to their like skills, how, how good they are in something, um, own up to the academic level, own up to actually high profile person or people who they are. So you find that um, when it comes to networking <clears throat> and talking about yourself, we are not really good at it. <clears throat> excuse me for that we are not really good at it but then it is a very important skill it's a very important skill i don't even know how to insist on this and i'm actually going to be doing a training teaching people how to network because when you are 50 this is the truth the truth is that a lot of people are going to be biased against giving you that position but then if you do have the right network if you have the right people at the right positions that is your sure bet sure bet for you to get that position you need to network by the time you hit 50 and this goes to everyone who is listening whether you're you're 10 or you're 60. you need to start building network if you're not 50 start building your network that way by the time you're 50 if you will actually need uh, to change your job or to get another position or something like that you will have already built a network where you can leverage from but when you just hit the road learning in your in your career doing everything by yourself all alone with your fellow few kenyans or few ugandans or your few friends your little inner circle where all of you are in the same place it's gonna come calling later when you need someone who can leverage and position you networking is the best way for anyone who is over 50 to get a job because you will have someone who already know you they know what your skill sets are what you have been doing and they actually believe in you that way it's easier for them to bring you in but getting a whole new job from a whole new company um with everything from the scratch is gonna be harder but if you go about it through someone who knows you that is your sure bet okay and so what do we do? What, do? what should you do for you to get this job if you're over 50? Now, what you need to do, number one, is to have a professional resume that is going to reflect your skill set in a modern market way. Okay? To get this, look for a career coach. Look for someone who can do it for you, who can write it for you. Um, if you want me to do it, I definitely would love to. Just hit my DM or write on the comment or something. Uh, let me know and I would be really glad to assist you with that. I actually just worked with a lady who is 55 and for 30 years she did not have a job um, an actual job but despite having really good education background and she got a job even though um it's like a few minutes drive away but then that was a good start getting your first job with a good pay and benefit that is a good start now if she have to move to another position it's up to her but at least i got her into the workforce so if you need to get a job you need a good resume look for someone another thing you need interview training and coaching you cannot go in there and make them feel like you are bringing 15 years old type of life into the company what they are looking for actually they are looking for something in the future that can be brought right now into the company for them to win so you need to train you need to know how to sell yourself how to market your skills and how to carry yourself through the interview i mentioned about things like insisting on your ability to learn quick you need to show them that you can learn quick you need to have the right verbiage based on the position you're looking for you want them to feel that you are actually updated and aware of what that industry is all about and you can be able to deliver on it okay you need to bring your high energy you have to be a beat you want them to feel like you can execute you're not there like to doze off at work and be lazy and actually 50 is not even old 50 year is it's not old at all that's why i said we are fighting the bias in the market we are not actually fighting the problem of aging 50 is so young you can start your career all over at 50 but then you will have to just go about it right because you're fighting a system you're working within a system that is biased already so you have to prepare and get your game on right okay
and then uh, when you do your application process you also want to consider applying to positions or to organizations that hire people your age so for instance if you're applying for a job at silicon valley and when you're 50 where it's an industry dominated by 16 year olds to um 38 year olds or something that might be a little harder it's, it might be a little harder for you but then if you look at organizations that hire older people there are organizations and places that actually do love hiring people who are older uh, they love uh, great great color workers you apply to those positions it's going to be very easy for you in fact i'm going to go ahead and post a link i'm going to post a link at the jobs and career guide with gina it's a facebook group where i post more information for you guys go in there and i will post a link on a, um, a, a place where you can find a lot of jobs for anyone who is over 50 years old so if you're over 50 you're trying to apply for a job i will post that link you can look for a job in there okay and so with that i hope you guys got this information and it's going to be helpful to you remember all points prepare before you go into the battle always prepare before you go in there and apply make sure your resume is on point well prepared you have your interviewing skill on point you have everything arranged and when you go there you're just going to execute and make a win preparation beats talent you need to prepare you need to arrange everything that you have got to do and then each and every time each and every step prepare for that and you will be guaranteed to win okay thank you guys for watching anyone who would want me to help you or help your auntie uncle mom whoever is over 50 years old and they would need my help please let them know i would be glad to assist them and anyone this for any African immigrant who is 55 years and older. If you are a fresh immigrant, you don't have a job and you really need help. I do help 50 years and older immigrant, fresh immigrant get jobs for free. I, we don't charge for that. We don't do anything other than just assist you, guide you and help you get to that position. So if you need my help, please go ahead and DM me and we will help you for free on that. If you are over 50 or you need help, whatever age group you are in i do help people all the time every day get good better jobs and this is 2020 february it's going to be very easy for you if you start hunting for your job now that way you can end this year with a big win okay wishing you guys the best we will be catching up again soon and thank you so much for tuning in i really appreciate and i don't take this for granted at all okay all right have a lovely weekend ahead